Right, good morning, students. So um, today's news chapter is my childhood. Okay. So my childhood. Uh, this is an extract from the autobiography. Okay, uh, Wings of Fire or Missile Man, and the, you know the late president of India, APJ Abdul Kalam. Okay. So you all know that uh, Abdul Kalam, he was a uh, you know well-known scientist, and he also became the 11th president of India in 2002. Yeah. So in this uh, biography, Wings of Fire, he speaks about his childhood. Okay. Let's look here at the first paragraph. Right, students. As I have told you before that it's not possible for me to read words by words, sentence by sentence. Okay. This, this is just to you know save the time. I'm going to explain to you paragraph by paragraph. So you need to be very you know, careful and be very attentive. Well, so uh, Kalam, Abdul Kalam, he was born in middle class family, Tamil Nadu, in the yeah, town of Rameswaram. Before, former name was Madras. And his father's name was Jai Nul Labdin. And his father was not much wealth, not much, uh, very rich, uh, despite this ad disadvantages, okay? Uh, his father possessed, you know, great wisdom and true generosity of spirit. And his father's name was Ashes, Ashes Ma, right? And his father helped uh, his mother a lot, okay? Ashes Ma, okay? Right, so his mother used to feed uh, a number of people, the needy people and the hungry people. And he could not recall Kalam could not recall the exact number of people that uh, his mother used to feed every day. So, so outsiders are more than the family members, than their family members, yeah? The guests or the outsiders at with them is, you know, much more, I mean, more than the members of their own family put together. All right, quickly, let's go to the second paragraph. So here, um, he says that he was one of, one of like many children, okay, a short boy with uh, undistinguished looks born to tall and from handsome parents and they lived in their ancestral house it was a large paka house made of limestone and brick where on the mosque street of rameshwaram okay and his father used to you know avoid all these comforts and luxuries so he was quite satisfied abdul kalam was quite satisfied during his childhood you know, both materially and emotionally, all the things like food, medicines, and clothes are provided. Okay, let's move to the next paragraph. Sorry, next page. Right now, the Second World War broke out in 1939, and that time Abdul Kalam was just eight years old. Okay, and then at the time, you know, the sudden demand of tamarind, tamarind seeds erupted, boomed in the market. He never know the reason why it was, you know, suddenly demanded, okay, in the market. So he used to collect seeds and sell them in a, you know, shop on Moss Street. And he could earn Anna, you know, in the Indian coin. And his brother-in-law, Jalauddin, would tell him the stories about war. And which he would attempt to read the headlines in Dinamani. Dinamani is... Uh, news channel in Tamil Nadu, okay? Name of a channel, a live channel. Right after the Indian joined uh, the Allied forces, like the Allied forces are UK, US, Russia during the Second World War, right? And the area were un unaffected because it's very isolated, okay? And what happened after that, you know? The um, train, the suspension of train Holy Rameswara station was um, you know, stopped. So before the Second World War, the train used to stop or halt at Rameshwara station. But after, during this war, the train were being suspend, suspended. Okay, they were not allowed to halt at the Rameshwara station. So the newspapers had to be bundled and throw out from the moving train on the Rameshwara road between Rameshwara and Tanuks Gori. So his cousin, some Sam, Sudin. Who distributed after collecting the uh, paper? Okay, that's been thrown from the um, moving train. They collect. They used to collect the newspapers and distributed it in Rameshwara. See to catch the bundles. 
So this is how he used to earn money and it was he was very proud of that he could earn his own money for the first time doing these newspaper jobs. Okay, quickly move to the next paragraph four. So every child is born with you know some um, inherited characteristics, a personality, right? So um, Abdul Kalam was inherited with honesty and self-discipline from his father. So he was very honest and very disciplined child that was being inherited from his father, from his mother. Mm. This is the quality he possesses, right? Faith in, a faith in goodness. I mean, he was very kind. And Kalam had three close friends. These are the names. Please read it by yourself. Aravindan, Siva Prakasan, Ramanada Sastri. And all these boys, they are from Orthodox Hindu Brahmin families, yeah? You know Orthodox, right? Ramananda Sastri, son of uh, Bakshi Lakshmana Sastri. He was the priest in Rameshwara Temple. Later, he took over the priesthood of Rameshwara Temple, okay? Later on, Ram Ramananda Sastri became the priest of Rameshwara Temple. Okay, let's move to the next page, number 70, quickly. And then his second friend, Ara Ravindan, went to the, joined the business in transportation, okay, for visiting pilgrims. And his third friend, Sivaka Prashan, became catering contractor for the railway, um, railways, I mean, Southern Railways. Okay, and of course, he became the president of India, right? Okay, paragraph number five. Right here, um, during this, you know, annual Shri Sita Rama, what happened there? Their family used to arrange boats with a special platform okay, for carrying idols of the Lord from the temple to the marriage site, which is at the middle of the pond called Rama Deta, which was near his house or their house. And, you know, events from Ramayana and, you know, from the life of prophet were the bedtime stories, okay? So Ramayana and the prophet, the life of a prophet were the bedtime stories, stories there to be being told before you go to sleep, right? My mother and grandmother would tell the children in her, in their families. Eh? Mother, grandmother used to tell the stories about Ramayana and, and the life of a prophet before they go to sleep. Okay. Now next, uh, one day what happened uh, when, um, you know, Abdul Kalam was in fifth standard here at Rameshwara school, okay? A new teacher came to their classroom and Abdul used to wear a cap which marked as, uh, you know, as a Muslim, the cap of, you know, the Muslim used to wear a cap on the head, right? And he always sits in the front row, in the front row next to Ramananda Sastri, who were the, okay, before we go to the next page, if you look here at the picture, see, our family used to arrange boats for carrying idols of the Lord from the temple to the Mary side. This is the picture, okay? And the idol of the Lord Krishna here. Okay, so let's move to the next page again. A secret thread. Okay, so Muslim used to wear a cap on the head and Hindus used to wear a thread, right? If you look at the picture, you know, thread like a Hindu Brahmin. So they used to sit together, sorry, next to Ramananda. He used to sit next to his friend Ramananda, who was a Hindu and Abdul Kalam was a Muslim, of course, right? But here what happened, the new teacher could not tolerate, okay, that um, Hindu's prison with a Muslim, sitting with a Muslim boy. So, what happened here? He was asked to go back to uh, sit at the next uh, back, back bench. Okay. The teacher asked him to go and sit to the next bench. Uh, he, feel very, he felt very sad, okay. So he's so sad and depressed. So they were very sad because the, the teacher did not allow them to sit together, right? Hindu and Muslims could not be sit together. So when I shifted, okay, see the image of him weeping. His friend was weeping, crying when they were separated. Okay, next uh, paragraph. Let me try to you know finish this as soon as possible, okay? Now after school, what happened? They went back home and then um, told their story to the respective parents. And Lakshmana Shastri summoned the teacher. His um, friends, Ramananda Shastri's um, father's name was Lakshmana Shastri, okay? Called the same teacher in presence of them. And uh, he told the teacher that he should not spread poison of social inequality, okay? And uh, he bluntly asked the teacher to apologize or, you know, quit the school. 
and the island. And then afterward, the teacher realized his mistake. He regret, okay? And um, convinced ultimate reform the young, see? Okay, so Lux, Lux Manas has three, okay? He convey ultimate reform the young teacher. He reformed the young teacher, okay? In other words, this young teacher learned a lesson from Lakshmana Shastri, strong of his strong opinions or beliefs. Okay, page number seventy-two. Next page. We just look at a look at the picture of students. See, this is during the annual Sri Sita Rama Kalyanam ceremony. Okay, written in page number seventy, paragraph number five. Okay, next page. Oh, it's a very long one. Okay, I always sit in the front row next to Ramananda's Sastri. So this is Abdul Kalam uh, wearing a cap, okay? He's a Muslim and uh, this is uh, Hindu, okay? Brahmin, okay? Yeah. A threat, his friend Shastri. Now uh, there was a teacher, okay? Science teacher, Shiva Sub Ramanian Ayer, okay? Though he was an Orthodox, you know, this teacher, okay? Orthodox Brahmin. He tries to break uh, the, you know, the social barriers between Hindu and Muslim. Okay, and he used to spend hours with uh, Abdul Kalam and would say, Kalam, I want you to develop so that you are on par. Par, par means parallel, isn't it? Equal with highly educated people of the big, uh, big cities. So he used to say to Kalam that his teacher, okay, you must you develop, okay? And so that you, you, so that you are on par, you are equal with the highly educated people of the rest of the country or sorry, the rest of the big cities. The science teacher opined that there is no difference between Hindu and Muslims, everyone is equal. Okay. Next paragraph number nine. So one day his science teacher invited Abdul Kalam to his home, okay, for a meal. And his wife, his teacher's wife, was horrified and afraid at the idea of Muslim boy being invited to have a food in the pure kitchen, okay. So his wife, uh, his science teachers were refused to serve uh, um, him, Abdul Kam, a foot in uh, her kitchen because she is from, you know, Hindu and then she could not serve a food to a Muslim boy. So Shiva Subharmania, he served him the food, okay, personally, okay. She, was, she did not get angry with his wife. She was not uh, disturbed, okay. You get a worse meaning here. So he himself served food to uh, his student, Abdul Kalam. Okay, next page. Well, let me try to finish up this as quickly as I can, just to save the time. Okay, to eat the meal, okay. Okay, so his wife was watching them from backside, from behind, okay, the kitchen door. And Abdul Kalam was wondering if um, she, the uh, wife, okay, observed the different way, different, the way he eat, drain water, clean the floor after the meal. He was wondering, okay. And when I was leaving his, when Abdul Kalam was leaving his teacher's house, his teacher, Shiva Subha Mariam Ayerwa, whatever, science teacher, okay, invited him to join dinner again for the next time, observing my hesitation, but Abdul Kalam hesitated, okay. And he asked him, teacher asked him not to be upset. And he said, once you have to decide the system, then you have to be, you have to be confronted. Teacher told him, Abdul Kalam, that if you want to bring a change of the system, then no problem have to be faced, okay? So next time when he visited again, his teacher's house the next week, uh, teacher's wife took him inside the room and served him food with her own hand that time. For the first time, uh, he wasn't served food by his wife, but second time he was being served food by his teacher's wife, okay, with her own hands, okay, paragraph 10. And then the Second World War was over, in the year 1945, right, 1930-1945, Second World War, okay. And Indian freedom was imminent. It is for sure that India is going to get freedom. Gandhiji declared India would build their own India. The whole country was filled with unprecedented opti optimism. optimism. Then uh, he asked his father permission to go to, Ram to leave Rameshwara and go to Ramanathapuram. 
for his higher studies. Okay, so this is Abdul Kalam, and then his teacher, wife serving the food, okay? Shiva Subaramanya's Ayur's wife's here to meet inside her kitchen and serve him food this, when he visited for the second time, yeah? Okay, 74. Now Abdul Kalam is living, he's going to Ramanathapuram, okay? From Rameshwar. Okay, next. We're well, almost finishing. Now his father said it, um, that, okay, Abdul, see, Abul, see, if you know you, you have to go away to grow, I know that you have to go away to grow, like a bird, see, the seagull not fly across the scene alone with, without a nest. So our life is like a bird, you know, the seagull doesn't stay in the nest forever, one, he has, he has to leave the nest and, you know, fly away across the sun alone one day. And his father quoted Khalil Gibran to my hesitant mother. Mm, his mother did not want him to leave, okay? So he was hesitating, isn't it? And so his father quoted uh, Khalil Gibran. Khalil Gibran, he, he's a poet, okay? A very famous poet. So his father quoted uh, Khalil Gibran's words, okay? Your children are not your children, see? Khalil Gibran said, your children are not your children. And father was, his father was quoting his word, okay? Basing on his word, he said, your children are not your children, see? You are, they are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. So it says, the parents, your children, are not your children, see? They are, they are the sons and daughters of life longing for itself. Of course, they come through you. They come through mother, mother's womb, but not from you. So parents or mother, you may give your children, you know, love, but not your thoughts. Because they have their own thoughts. So my mom, mother, parents, you know, give them love, children's uh, love. Yeah, I mean, they love the children, but they cannot give their thoughts because the children have their own thoughts, yeah? So APJ Abdul Kalam, an extract from the Wings of Fire or Missile Man, okay? So this is the end of this uh, chapter. I'm going to give you the homework. All right, if you student, just go to the map, okay? And I try to identify the name of a place here. And... And all these question answers I've already given it before, right? Study at home, okay? Okay. Right, students, this is your homework for today. Number two, match the phrases column A and column B. Match it. And number two, it's quite easy, okay? I'll write the opposite, for example, here. By putting the word prefix, adequate means inadequate, right? I am inadequate, okay? Regular, opposite of regular is irregular, right? So that will be your homework for today. Please write it in your copy book and submit it. Now students remember no homework, no marks. Okay, that will be all for today. And thanks for being with me once again. I'll see you in my next class. Till then, take care. Bye.